fuck you. Okay, welcome to the most common security flaws or a tale of an old game and its problems. Who am I? My name is Matt. I mean, actually, it's Mateusz, but for the sake of simplicity, let's call me Matt. I'm a developer and a scrum master at Perfect Dashboard. And I started doing IT when I was about 10. Um, so I've been doing it, doing it for the most of my life, I'm um, to know. Um, I'm also a bit of a security uh, freak. I like to delve in computer security. I like to break things. I like to investigate things and poke where they're not supposed to be poked. So, I promised you an old terrible game. Move online. Has anyone ever heard of this game? One person, yeah. three people. Yeah, it was a game um, that looked like this, basically. Just yeah. the dragon. <laughs> yeah, um, there were dragons in that game actually, yeah. uh, golden dragons. Um, it was released in 2003 by a Korean company called Webzy. It claims to be an MMORPG, but really each server supported up to 200, 300 players, so not really massively multiplayer. Isometric view, as you saw. And it was basically a hack and slash. You went around killing monsters, picking up items. It tried to be Diablo, but it failed. So, the first problem, trusting the client. As you can see, I do all my validation in JavaScript. It works, right? They validated stuff on the client side. This is a packet. Uh, I'll use color coding to denote the different parts of this packet. So we have the header, C1, and the size, 5 bytes. And the header will be blue. Um, so there are four types of packets in that game, C1, C2, C3, C4. Uh, basically, C3 and C4 are the same as C1 and C2, just had two bytes for the size. I'll only be using C1 and C3 for this example. Then the next part of the packet is the opcode, denoted in green. It basically tells the server which kind of operation the client wants, whether it's to move, to kill a monster, to pick up an item. That's the opcode. And there, in red, we have the data, the actual data for this operation. This packet is a move packet. It means move my character to um, positions 80 and 80F, because the maps were two-dimensional grids, so um, and they have a maximum size of 235 squares, so of course it is one byte per x and one byte per y. The problem with this is what if I want to move to the other side of the map? Well, to teleport. I shouldn't be able to, right? Who validates that? The client. So, of course, if you send a packet with the right data, you just teleport all around the map. But a more interesting case of client side validation is this packet. It's a packet that tells the client to disconnect from the server. When you push the exit game button uh, in the game's options, the game tells the server that it wants to disconnect, the server waits five seconds, and then sends this packet, but doesn't drop the connection. It removes the player from the player table, um, it removes the player from the chat system, but doesn't actually disconnect the player. It's up to the client to disconnect. So if you block that packet, you're suddenly not in the player's table, which means no one can hit you, which means monsters don't notice you, which means you become invincible. And I use that to make what I called the epic mode in my uh, cheat. Because yeah, I wrote cheats for the game. It's that simple. Going further, because that wasn't the first problem. Um, they introduced a guild chat system, because of course you had to have a guild in that game. And um, basically, that's what the guild screen looked like. And you can see on that screenshot someone said, all up, all up all, and that showed up for all guild members. So let me show you an actual piece of um, code from that guild chat system. Now, who can tell me What's wrong with that? Yeah. Anyone? SQL injections. Yay, SQL injections. <laughs> exactly. So you just set a guild message to contain an apostrophe, um, a quotation mark, a single quotation mark, and then you can become the game master or you can add yourself, you know, 
hunk of money or items or banner the users. Because why bother with validation, right? The client validates that again. Now, the night of service or how I stopped worrying and crashed the server. This came about because I got into an argument with a quite big um, set of networks for this game and we went on a bit of a personal level with the main guy who ran it. So I decided to make his life as difficult as possible and I found a way to crush the server. Basically, every time you clicked on a non-playable character, like a shopkeeper, a person that allows you to create guilds, someone who gives you quests, we send this packet to the server. Now, as you can see, the data bit is 01FA. And that is an ID of the non-playable character found on the server. This number is actually a pointer. A pointer points to some block of memory. Right? In this case, 01FA points to this thing, right? B01F9, B01F9, of course. So, I wondered, what if I sent this packet? I mean, surely there's not, you know, that many characters in the game. Uh, sorry, not this one. That many characters in the game. Um, so what I tried to do is look up that region of memory, which wasn't allocated, which meant the game crashed and kicked out all the players. All the items that were, that were given out um, before the last status update were lost, all the transactions were gone, all the money was gone, and players got quite pissed off. <laughs> and I you know, wrote, wrote a simple bash script that just sent that every five minutes to piss the guy off. Yes. Okay, another fun Fun, fun thing to do if you want to screw with other people is to disconnect the players around you. So no more game for you. This packet has just one byte for the data section. It's a very simple packet. Um, excuse me. Um, and it basically tells the server that I just rotated in one of eight possible directions. Because I showed that to other players, that, oh, this guy is now facing right, this guy is now facing left. So, oh, and so when you send that to the game server, it resends that to all the players around you. Who can tell me what's important about this number? <laughs> Come on, don't be shy. Anybody? Anybody? Okay, going to go into it. It's around yeah. number. Round, round number 2 to the 16th minus 1. Yeah. It's the maximum value that a 2 byte word <laughs> can hold. And who's head of a buffer? No? No one? Okay. A buffer is just an array that holds some data and has a set size. In this case, we have a buffer of 12 characters, then that is char C12. And then I pointed to that uh, array, and basically makes that uh, a string in C, but it doesn't matter. And then we have some very important stuff, like say string pointers, return addresses. Basically, when the code stops executing or it reads all the data into the buffer, where it should go next? And guess what the size of the buffer was? Okay. Power run number. <laughs> all right, <laughs> sixty-five thousand five hundred thirty-six. So. What if I send 65,536 packets of rotation? The server would happily resend it to everyone around me, which would happily override the memory, which would happily crush the games. Mm -hmm. That's how you disconnect the players. Next up, improper credential storage. <laughs> Let's just use Rasputin two times to be twice as secure. Yet, yeah. I mean, it was 2003, but they still managed to do so many things so wrong that it baffles me to this day. First of all, both login and password were limited to 10 characters. Just 10. Then they were stalled by, in plain text by default. 
the optional security version allowed you to use MD5, yeah, it's MD5, without salting. So just useless. And that's the best bit. When you said when you log into the game, the game sent the password not, you know, in plain text. So they thought, oh, that's not secure. So let's just use a simple XOR algorithm that takes five minutes to track unless you're a seven-year-old baby. It, it was it's baffling. It's baffling that they managed to do it so badly. So no wonder when those game servers were hacked, um, many, many, many credentials just went out of the open and everyone started cracking passwords on other sites. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it suddenly decided not to <laughs> update. Okay. No, ah, it skipped. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, how quickly can a human click? <coughs> this problem arose from another problem because I noticed that whenever you attack a monster, they just send a packet. So I said, okay, I have a program that for every one um, of those packets, I would send thousands that would take a thousand hits. I thought, surely they have to be checking that. Oh. And I thought, they have to be next to the monster to, to send that. Are they checking that? No. Can I try to log in like multiple times a second? Surely they will check that. The answer is <laughs> exactly. So you know, nowadays when you try to log into Facebook, Google, or so I mean something less important, they will limit your attempts. Mm -hmm. attempts maybe they will show you a capture, they will try to make sure that you're not a, not a robot. They won't allow a thousand times per second. Um, but <laughs> webs never follow that. They allow it. So at one point I actually managed to get to a rate of, let me my notes, to a rate of uh, 100,000 login attempts per second on the big server. And we found facts. Improper login attempts are not logged. So there's no way of knowing if someone's trying to break your server. Mm -hmm. So yeah, geniuses at work. And <laughs> another giant problem are uh, improper auth checks. Um, because when I got to the login screen of this game, I noticed, well, I can receive some messages in the top corner, I can send some messages to the server, so let me make sure that I can only kill a monster if I'm actually a player. Can I buy stuff and I'm not a player? Yes, and that will crash the server. Why? Because it will try to allocate the new item with the ID of the player that bought it, but there was no player. So we got a null pointer exception. Again, if you go back to my slide on pointers, if you try to point to an area that isn't allocated, you will get an exception because the system will just go, wait, you want to access something at FFFA, there's nothing there, you, you can't do it, or it's not your process memory. So buying stuff crash the server. Um, this packet also crashed the server from the login screen, which is how I created the script to piss off that, that little stupid guy. <coughs> to not use stronger words. Yeah, let's go back. So, I'm talking about a 14-year-old game, right? Why am I talking about a 14-year-old game if we are at a Joomla conference? Well, because those problems are problems in fundamental design. There are problems in understanding how a client server relationship works. And in the case of Joomla, the browser the sorry the browser is the client and our Joomla is the server. So if you trust the client to do the validation, well I can just modify JavaScript. If you trust the client to properly log you out after X minutes, I can just not do that. And some of the problems that I've described in Moon Online Okay, then Gemma. For example, the recent SQL injection in common fields. That was a fuck up, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, we have account takeover, uh, basically improper session management. Uh, when you posted improper data, it got saved to a session um, and through an error, that's correct. But then you posted another data that was correct this time, it merged it with the data in the session. 
and saved up, which allowed us to, for example, change the password of a simple user. Improper auth checks, improper session management. Then we had the also quite recent uh, account creation uh, that allowed you to register any user even if the register option was off. Again, improper auth checks, improper config management. It also allowed the way to register as a super user, which was fine as well. I used that. Uh, we had remote code execution, probably one of the most terrifying of possible bugs because, hey, thanks for the server. I can now use it. And cross site scripting, which many people think is not as important, but it actually is. If I can steal the op piece, I can install anything on your site. If I steal your session, I can install anything on your site and then execute any code because I can write my own extension that will just eval whatever I post to it. I can make it hidden. So the problems I'm, I'm talking about did come up in a game that was 14 years old, built only by an underfunded development team somewhere in Korea. But, but those problems are problems in fundamental application design and they apply to all applications, whether they are web-based or not. And that was my short presentation. Didn't want to keep you for an hour. I will now happily take any questions from the audience. Okay, are you sure that 1,000 kids per second will not be beaten by some cotter spread? Yeah. Uh, come again, please. <laughs> Don't you think that 1,000 clicks per second will be beaten by some Counter Strike gamers? <laughs> I think that 1,000 clicks per second will be beaten by a Counter Strike gamer. Yeah, I think. Maybe not Counter Strike, maybe StarCraft. <laughs> okay. Yeah, those, those guys are crazy. Also Korean. Wait. Any other questions? Okay, I see no questions. There, maybe there is some volunteer who thinks that it has a specific server. <laughs> I mean, maybe you would like that. We can go to check that. We could check that, yeah. <laughs> Alright, if I see no questions, then I invite you all to coffee. Oh, thank you. <laughs>